Hi, my name is Don Felker. I'm a senior consultant with Magenic. And in this timecast, we're going to cover Spark variables and how to use them with inside of your views. We'll also cover some basic view data and strongly tied model information as well. Starting off from where we previously left off, we have our simple application that just spits out some basic information inside of our index view, such as Hello Sparky. Now, if we want to use actually a variable, we have a couple different options with a global variable and local variables. Global variables can be defined in any Spark file. However, I'm going to go ahead and, and include them in the global.spark. This is the global partial, which we will cover in a future timecast. But at this instance, just know that global is read in each time the Spark view engine renders its views. So we can include global information here, such as namespaces that we would want to use all, inside of all the Spark views, as maybe as well as any other information uh, the global variable set up already. To set up a global variable, it's pretty simple. Open bracket, global. And then we're going to give it a name. So maybe we want to call it my title equals, and we'll provide the value here inside of the quotes. So we're going to say, this site is wicked awesome. Very simple. Now we have set up enough. We have set up a variable called my title. This is accessible with any other Spark view. So if we go over to the variable demo.spark, which has nothing in it, we'll actually be able to access this variable from within the Spark engine. Now, to get things to present to the browser, we need to utilize the code output notation. And that's done with the dollar sign, curly. As you can see, the IntelliSense is installed with this small light green coloring or teal on the syntax here. We can say my title, and there's our, there's our variable. Please note, since we have not given this my title variable a type, it's going to default to system.object. And we can see that by going here, dot, and there's our four members that are on system.object. If we want to provide a type to this, we can specify type equals string. And usually sometimes I have to build this to get it to run, and then hit the dot again. Give it a few more seconds while it does some background compilation. And there we go. And we should see here two lower invariant and two upper invariant, which are just members of the string class. So now we should be able to view my title from anywhere within a Spark file. So if we can just build it and we fired it up, which I've already done here, but we'll do it again. We'll see here, we actually have an error. Now this is going to be the error that Spark spits out to us. Spark is dynamically compiling the views, as you see here, dynamic view compilation failed. It's giving it a nice, long, unique name, and actually generates C sharp behind the scenes for us. We can see here it's giving us an error stating that the semicolon is expected. If we look down further into the exception here, we can see that Spark has actually generated a global variable inside of the, the view class. And it's underscore my title and then gives it actually a public property there. But notice something. This site is wicked awesome. It doesn't have any double quotes. To get around this, what we need to do is go back to the global.spark and add single quotes to this. Okay, if we just refresh this now, the basic uh, home index will come back. Let's go to the home, which is the controller that it's in, variable demo. Let's say this site is wicked awesome. We can go back and we can change it with a yeah at the end. There it goes, shows up with the yeah. Now this is one way you can set up a global variable. You can also set up extra variables of the same string type in here. So we can say something like this, uh, uh, my name equals John filter. So now I can go back to variable demo and my name will also be available. So I maybe want to put a simple break here, and my break, code output notation, my name. Again, this is a string as well. Again, we can see there's a problem. We've, again, we forgot to add the the single quotes, which is going to be a problem. So we go back in, add our single quotes to our variables. There we go. Don Felker has now been output. And it's very simple to perform any other type of operations because once we're in the code output notation window, we can perform other basic functions such as to upper and then, which will give us the upper variant of this string. So there we go, Don Felker. We also have other different types of variables. Let's go ahead and delete these. We don't need these. Actually, we'll leave them there so you can have them for the source. And I'll put a horizontal rule here. We also have other variables which we can declare locally. 
To escape into C sharp, so we can declare a local variable that's done with the pound sign. So what we can do is here say bar, we can say foo equals this site. Or we can say, you know, hello, let's put, some, put someone's name right here. And we'll just do basic string format syntax. So that's a foo variable that's now been declared locally inside of the variable demo that spark view. And then I can set up something like this. So I can say create a bold in HTML. And then what we can do is do something like this. Again, do code output notation. String format. I say foo. And maybe let's use my name again here. Which we'll use the global variable. So when this view renders now, it should say hello, Don Felter. Let's go back here, refresh. We don't have to rebuild because it's gonna compile the background. There we go. Hello, Don Felter. If we go change this to Put a comment then. You are one cool guy. Fix my terrible grammar. Hello, Don Filker, you are one cool guy. As you can see, it's really easy to create basic variables, send them back and forth. Now what we have uh, another example of is the a product controller. Now, perhaps you want to display basic products. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to create a basic product, which is a simple class with the name, SKU, and a price. And then we'll return the product as the model. So we can see here there's an object model we're passing. It's just type object. This is going to be part of the viewData.model uh, member of the view data inside of the view. So if we go back to into our product location in the index, which is where we're coming from, inside of the view we can specify view data, which we're saying there's something in the view data that's called model, and it's type is a sparkcast.demo.webhost.models.product, which is what we just looked at a few seconds ago. It is inside of a models folder we have right here. Again, it's this product. So what we're saying is anytime I access viewdata.model, I'm going to be actually getting a strongly typed variable of type product. And we can see that right here. I've set up a basic table with a name, the price, and the SKU to match the, to match the model. And all I say is viewdata.model.name. So to walk through this, view data. There's our view data. We can actually access anything in the view data as well. Now we have the model. Now there's the model. If you see right here, SparkCast demo product, there it is. It's a strong type model. Model dot price. There we go. I'll copy this just to save some typing. And this will be skew. So we did that skew. And for some reason, it looked like my copy and pasting skills are not up to what they should be today. Okay. Make sure that's built. Now if we go back to our code window here, excuse me, our browser window, we can go to slash product. And let's just say we go to ID equals five. Give it a second to compile in the background. And there we go. Our product is party cups, the price is 549, and the SKU is party 001. When we go to our product controller, we will see that these are the exact things we've set up. We've now utilized a strongly type model from within the view. There's also another way to do this, to actually pass data into the view. You could perhaps just use the view data dictionary itself. We're setting up the same exact product, but this time we're just setting it inside of the view data to something called the product. The key is the product, and its value is the product. So we're just telling it to return the view. The real view it's going to return is showme.spark. We open up showme.spark, and we pretty much have the same exact looking type of thing. However, the difference is up top here. Now up top we have view data, and we have the product which is actually the key. That's also going to be our variable name. So you could choose a different variable name, you know, if you want to change a different key as well. You can say the product equals, now this is the type, the type of the product. Excuse me, the type of the variable inside of view data. For view data's key, the product, the type is our model type product. Now inside of our Spark file, our Spark view, using the code output notation, we just type the product, and there it is inside of our intelligence. Uh, price, go down again one more, and we can set up product. Save that, make sure it's compiled. And up top here, we will go to show me, and ID equals 5 or whatever. And then we go again. Now we've accessed the show me route, uh, excuse me, the show me action on the product controller. 
and we're passing an ID of equals five, and that's just perhaps you maybe you would want to go get the product from a repository. Here we're just setting it up manually, uh, but this is just a way to show you how you might do it. Pass the product into your view. Go back to your showme.spark. You're going to get the key. Set it to the type of product because it's inside of the view data, and that's the key. And you'll be able to access it and its members based upon that key and using the code output notation. As you can see, you can set up local variables, you can set up global variables, pass in strongly tied models, and also access view data very easily from within Spark. Again, and until next time, thank you.